Okay, so this is differentiation. Using the chain rule. Now, you, you know, what does the chain rule mean? Um, I'm not actually going to explain that until the end because I don't think we need to do it. I don't think it's something that's complicated. So we already know how to differentiate y equals x to the power of 4, or, you know, variations upon that. We know that when we differentiate it, we multiply by the power, reduce the power by 1. And if I happen to have a coefficient in front, well, that stays there. So when I multiply by the power, multiply by 5 in this case, I've got that 3 already sitting there, so I end up with 15 up front, 3 times 5. And we did lots of that last year where this was a single variable. So what we now need to do is we now need to differentiate expressions where this is a bit more complicated. For example, So I'm trying to get you to think of this as being a bit like this, because it's something to the power of 4. And the good news is that when we differentiate it, we start in exactly the same way. We start by saying, OK, I'm going to multiply by the power, and reduce the power by 1. Now that's not the end of it. What we then need to do is, and, and the chain rule explains why this happens, but I think that complicates things. What we then need to do is we then need to multiply, and I'm going to use sort of dot notation, which is not a fancy way of writing multiply. We multiply by what you get when you differentiate the thing. Okay, it was x here. It's no longer x now. It's 3x plus 4. When I differentiate 3x plus 4, I get 3. So that multiplied by 3 is that. And that's what the chain rule talks about doing. It talks about differentiating something which is a bit more complicated than that. The start of the process is the same, and then you just get the bit tagged on at the end where you multiply by the the thing you get when you differentiate that. So the differential of that. So if I'd asked you to differentiate y equals 3x plus 4, you would have said dy by dx equals 3. So that's why at the end of that process I have to multiply by 3. Now I'll, I'll explain sort of why that works in just a moment, but I think it's easy to get into the habit of doing that thing firstly. Uh, what about if this thing is a bit more complicated again? power by 1, but then multiply by what you get when you differentiate the thing. Which in this case, if I'd asked you to differentiate 2x plus 7, I'd hope you'd say, well that's 2x. So my answer is 6x Now there's another option, we could multiply that out. We could do 3x plus 4 times 3x plus 4 times 3x plus 4 times 3x plus 4. We could use the a plus b binomial thing we learned last year. And then we could differentiate it normally. But we get an answer that's the same as this one. Uh, and the same is true here. We could multiply that out, differentiate each term separately. We don't need to. And similarly, we don't need to multiply out that answer. It's perfectly okay just to, just to leave it like that. Now, 
Yes. Let, let me get you to do some practice. I, I, I will sort of formalise this and sort of formally state the change law, but I think I might get you just to do it. A little bit of practice. So um, see if you can use that process just to, let's just do these first six. Um, I'm hoping that on the video you can see those because these aren't actually from our textbook. So have a go at differentiating those first six using that rule. I note I've got a coefficient out the front here, but that's just the same. Multiply by the power, reduce the power by one, and then multiply by what you get when you differentiate the thing in the brackets. So um, I'm going to write what dy by dx is in each case. I'm not going to write dy by dx equals. So with this one, it will be two lots of x plus 7 to the power of 1 multiplied by what you get when you differentiate that, which is 1. So we just get that. Here we get 5 lots of 2x minus 1 to the power of 4 multiplied by what you get when you differentiate that, which is 2. So we actually get 10 lots of 2x minus 1 to the power of 4. <coughs> With c, we already have the 3 out the front. So when we multiply by the power, we get 24 4 minus x to the power of 7. And I'm then going to multiply that by what I get when I differentiate the thing, which is minus 1. So actually it just becomes minus 24. Uh, and eventually you get to the point where you're doing this in one go in your head. Here I've got 7 lots of 3 minus 2x to the power of 6 multiplied by what you get when you differentiate the bracket, which is minus 2. So that becomes minus 14. There's nothing wrong with doing it in one go. If you want to write it as 7 blah, 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 times minus 2, that's brilliant. But you'll find pretty soon you get to do it in one go. Here, I might do this one in two steps. So I get 5 lots of the bracket to the power of 4 multiplied by what I get when I differentiate the bracket, which in this case is 2x. So that means my final answer is 10x times that bracket to the power of 4. And lastly, two lots of that bracket to the power of 1, so I'm not going to bother writing the power, multiplied by what you get when you differentiate that, which this time is 10x. So you actually end up with 20x times that, which I suppose you could multiply out this time because it's only to the power of 1. Um, so that would give you 100x to the power of 4 plus 60x, but there's no need to do that. So, so this is called the chain rule. And let me share the sort of formal definition of the chain rule with you, which maybe will help you understand why I'm, um, you know, I, I tend not to bother with it. So if you've got some function that you're being asked to differentiate, and you could say that that function is itself a function of something else. So for example, in this case here, you could sort of say this is u to the power of 5, where u is 2x minus 1. If you've got that, you can differentiate it by saying, right, differentiate that, which would give me dy by du, because my variable is u, and then multiply it by what you get when you differentiate that. Now, that's u equals something to do with x, so that would be dy by the x. And we know that when we multiply fractions together, we multiply the two numerators the two denominators, so our du's would cancel out, and we get dy by the x. So I would get 5u to the power of 4, that's what I get when I differentiate that, multiplied by 2, which gives me 10u to the power of 4, but u is equal to that. And that's the answer we got, okay? So, so that's the formal definition of the chain rule. Um, and you may understand now why I just don't bother with it. I just say, we don't need it. I just say, right, it's multiply by the power, reduce by the one, and then multiply by what you get when you differentiate the bracket. 
So just have a go at these last three here. It still works with you know, ones that are non-standard. Uh, if you're watching on the video, this is to the power of minus three. This is to the power of minus two. And I'm hoping you're going to rewrite this one in index form, power of minus four, before you try and do it. So see if you can differentiate those three. Same process. Multiply by the power, reduce the power by one, and then multiply by what you get when you differentiate the thing. So for the second one, multiply by the power, reduce the power by one, which minus two reduced by one is minus three, and then multiply by what you get in your different check brackets. So that means you end up with a six there. And just a reminder, you know, don't need to do this because the original question was written in index form, but if we wanted to rewrite that, the six isn't in the denominator. It's not part of the power of minus three. So if I was rewriting that as a fraction, it would be six over five minus three x to the power of three. And for the third one, hopefully you rewrote it like this first. And always when you're differentiating, multiply up brackets and um, write things in index form. So I've got minus four times this to the power of minus five, multiplied by minus three, which is what I get when I differentiate the brackets. So I end up with 12 minus 4 times minus 3. And I've run out of space, but I suppose you know, because that was written like this, I should re perhaps rewrite that. So that will be 12 on the numerator over 5 minus 3x to the power of 5. So this is rather pompously called the chain rule, but it's the first sort of expansion of what we can differentiate. We can now differentiate um, still powers, but powers of more complicated things, no longer just powers of individual um, variables. Um, so what sort of things are we asked to do? Well, it's the same as we're asked to do with any differentiation. It's about finding the gradient, so you can work out the equations of tangents and normals, and it's about finding turning points. So. Um, if you're at home, this is on page 239 in the textbook. Uh, see if you can have a go at that one. So you're going to differentiate and use that to find the gradient when x is 1. You also need to find the y value when x is 1, because to work out the equation of a tangent, you need a gradient and a point. OK, so I've differentiated to get this. Substituted my value of x in to get a gradient of minus 54. I didn't know the, X, the y value for my point, so I went to the original function for that, substitute that in to get my point. So I knew that this tangent had a gradient of minus 54, so I knew its equation looked something like that. Substitute the values in, Bobby Sharonko. Here is the next one, page 240, question 12. Let's go add that one. So I rewrote it in index form, uh, multiplied by the power, reduced the power by 1, and then multiplied by what I get when I differentiate the bracket, which altogether gives me 32 times that to the power of minus 3. And of course, if you've got a calculator, um, you can straight away substitute it into that. I, I didn't have a calculator, so I rewrote it like this. Uh, that's 12. So anyway, I got a rather unpleasant um, number. But don't forget, in this question, we're being asked to find the equation of the normal. So I'm going to flip it and change the sign. So that's not quite as bad. I then had to work out my y value. So I went back to the original function, did 4 over 2 minus 12 squared. and um, that gave me 
1 over 25. Um, so I can sort of go for it now. I'm going to substitute my values in. Oh dear. Uh, so 3 log of that is 3, 7, 5, because x is 3. So Can someone tell me what C is? Because I'm. <laughs> Has anyone else got anything vaguely like that? Yeah. Keep it the same. Um, right, so we've got this. Um, they want it written without fractions, so I'm going to have to multiply by a hundred. So that's going to give me a hundred y. Multiplying that by 100 is like multiplying it by 4 and then by 25, so that's... And you've got to sh shovel it all onto one side, so it doesn't matter which way you do it, but um, you either get 3125x minus 100y minus 9371 equals 0, or minus 3125x plus 100y plus 9371 equals zero. Right. 